Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the secrets of the symbol sprayer in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what we're going to achieve. This is a shape that is filled with sprayed symbols. First of all, we're going to create this shape and save it as a symbol. Then we're going to spray it on our document and use some of the symbol options here in the toolbar to adjust the symbols within our sprayed symbol set. Then once we've done that, we're going to add a rectangle to our document and use it as a clipping mask so that we can shape the symbol spray job that we've just done to the shape that we want to achieve. Now once you've done something like this, then this is just a step away. In this case, I created a star symbol and I used a graphic style that comes with Illustrator to actually texturize that symbol. Then I sprayed it and used all the symbol tools that we're going to be using to adjust the symbols that I had created. Finally, I just created a star shape and used it as a clipping mask. So this is another of the looks that you can achieve and it uses the exact same skills that we're going to look at in this video tutorial. So let's see now how we would create the symbol sprayer effects in Illustrator. I'm going to start with the star tool and I'm just going to build the shape. So I'm going to draw a star, but if I add the shift and the alt keys with this, I get this more interesting star shape. So I'm just going to draw that. And I'm going to the swatches panel because there is a nice gradient swatch here that I can fill the star with. Let's just target the fill color. I'm just going to fill it with this orange to yellow gradient. Now, if I click the gradient tool here, we'll double click the gradient tool here, I can turn it from linear into radial. So it's a little bit more interesting. I don't want a border or a stroke on my shape, so I'm just going to disable the stroke. Let's get rid of the gradient panel here. Now let's go and add a ellipse to our star. So I'm going to hold my mouse pointer over the middle of the shape and holding shift and alt I'm going to drag outwards to drag my circle. Now I didn't get it quite centered but this will be good enough so let's do that. Now it's come in with the existing color which I don't want so I'm just going to make it a blue color. It's also come in above my star so in my layers palette all I need to do is to drag my path below the path for the star. So now we can see the star and the background. And if I make this a white stroke, then we'll build back in that little white stroke that we had around the shape. And now all I need to do is to duplicate this and resize it. Or I could redraw it, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in front. So now I've got here, as you can see, two circle backgrounds. So I'm going to target the very back one because I want to now adjust it. And holding Shift and Alt, I'm just going to drag on its handle to make it a little bit larger. And there we've got that sort of white border inside it. So there's my shape that I'm going to start using with the symbol sprayer. So what I need to do now is to locate my symbols panel, which is here, and I need to select and drag and drop my symbol, what is going to be my symbol, into the symbols panel. Because this sets it up as something that can be sprayed. So you can choose a type movie clip or graphic. It doesn't really matter what you choose. It's for other purposes, not for this purpose that you would make that distinction. And we're just going to click OK. We could name it if we wanted to, but we're not going to bother. Now I can just delete my star. That's all done. So now I have my symbol that I can start spraying with my symbol sprayer. So I'm going here to locate my symbol sprayer tool and click it to target it. Now if I double click, I can open the symbolism tool options dialog. There are a few things to note here. The first one is that the symbol set density controls how close the symbols are sprayed to each other. There's no indication here, but the values for both intensity and symbol set density can vary between 1 and 10. So if I put 200 in there, it's only going to go back to 10. So we can have a symbol set density or the density of the symbols as they are sprayed 
one very far apart, ten very close. Intensity is going to control these other tools in a minute and again one to ten, one less de intense, ten most intense. So I'm going to set my density to four and just click OK for now. I'm ready to spray my symbol but you can see that the symbol is going to be really big so I'm using the open square bracket to size it down. The close square bracket on the keyboard would size it back up again. So I'm just going to start spraying. So I've got it at the size, I'm just holding my mouse button down and I'm spraying and this is what we call density for. This is the symbol. So as soon as I let go of my mouse button, this is my symbol sprayed in at that density. Now if I don't want it to be that density, I can just double click the symbol spray and I can change my density. So if I make it 10, all these symbols shrink to become, well they don't shrink in size, but they shrink in density so that they become very, very close together. And if I make it one, in other words, very far apart, then they become very far apart. So this is actually live. So if you don't get it right the first time, you can just double click the symbol sprayer tool to reopen this option and get it right. Now I'm thinking intensity for the tasks that I'm about to do is probably a bit high. This is going to make one mouse click do things pretty quickly. I want you to see it a little more slowly. So I'm going to set intensity to 4 and click OK. Now let's look at the other options in the symbol sprayer set. The first one is symbol shifter. I'm going to target it and now what I can do is target a symbol by holding my mouse pointer over it and move it out of the way. So I can shift these symbols. So if I don't like how they're placed or if I want to adjust them slightly, I can do that. And again, intensity, if I increase the intensity, then they would move further with each move of the mouse. There's also a symbol scruncher tool and what this does is scrunch the symbols up closer. So I'm just clicking and dragging with my mouse over a symbol and it's pulling them closer together. Of course if I had intensity set to a higher value then this would be happening faster. Now if you don't want them to scrunch and you want them to go the other direction you can do so. Just hold the Alt or Option key on the keyboard and instead of scrunching up they're going to separate. So they're going to go a little bit further apart. The symbol sizer tool allows you to adjust the size of the symbols. So with it selected and just clicking once on a symbol, I'm actually enlarging the symbol. Now I can click and hold and it gets much bigger or I can click multiple times and it'll get much bigger. Of course that begs the question of what if you want some of your symbols to be smaller? Well you just add the Alt or Option key and click on a symbol and then it becomes smaller. So we can vary the size of these symbols by just clicking on them using this symbol sizing tool. The symbol spinner allows us to spin symbols. Now with these stars it's not very far that we can spin them but we can spin them of course but it's not a big spin that we can do because it is a regular five pointed star. I'm just clicking and holding and you can see that there's an arrow that appears inside the symbol and when I let go the symbol rotates. And I actually rotated two symbols at once. You can see the two arrows. If you only want to rotate one symbol, just make sure that you're only seeing one arrow so it's only affecting this one symbol at a time. You can pull in either direction. Of course you can rotate it all the way around but it's not meaningful for this particular shape. There's also a symbol stainer tool. Now the symbol stainer tool requires us to set a fill color. So I'm targeting the fill color here and I'm going to target green. Now look, let's look and see what happens when I click on a shape. The stainer is actually staining the shape with the selected color. The more I click the more stained it becomes. Of course this is also tied to that intensity value. If I had a high intensity then these would stain up really really quickly. With a lower intensity value they're staining up more slowly and I can just continue to select different fill colors and every time I click on one of these objects, one of these symbols, it will then be stained. Now if we like the stain but we want to back off a little bit, 
but just go to that shape hold the alt key and click again and that's removing the stain from that particular instance of the symbol there's a symbol screener and that's going to adjust the transparency of the symbols again it's tied to the intensity so let's just make these symbols a little more transparent and you can see that this intensity setting even of four is working pretty fast on these symbols if I click twice it will become even more transparent less opaque if you want to go back the other way just hold the alt key down over a shape and you can bring back in the opacity for that particular shape The final option is the Symbol Styler. This allows me to apply graphic styles to my symbols. So I'm going to start by choosing Window and then Graphic Styles to open the Graphic Styles panel. We can find some more graphic styles to use by using Open Graphic Style Library and I'm going to choose the Illuminate Styles. And I'm going to drag a few of the styles that I want to use here into the Styles panel. So we'll do a yellow and a green and a pink and a blue style. Now I can just target the style and then click on the shape to apply that style to it. So I click a style, click on the shape. Now you might be tempted to select the Illuminate style from that panel but I found that I don't get the same results. I'm not actually getting the correct style applied. So if it works for you that's well and good but if it doesn't work for you just know that if you drag the style into the graphic styles panel that it will actually work. So let's do this green textured one, select it and now we can select over this shape and apply this graphic style to it and of course the more we click the more heavily that graphic style is applied to the shape. Now having created your symbols you may of course want to limit the area that is filled by the symbols. You may not want this big area and you're getting this big box simply because you're starting to spray symbols onto the screen. So if you want a little more control let's take the rectangle tool and let's just draw a rectangle over our symbols. Let's go to our layers and you can see here we have our path for our shape and our symbol set. I'm going to shift click so that I have the path for the rectangle and the symbol set both selected and I'm going to choose object clipping mask make and that clips the symbol set down to the shape of the object that I had selected. Now these of course can be individually edited so we can come in here and just select the shape and we can reshape it so I've got my direct selection tool and I'm actually making the rectangle smaller. If I target just the symbol box which is this box that has a much larger bounding box I can actually drag the symbols within that shape so I can position the portion of the symbols that I want to see inside that rectangle by just dragging it into position. So there you have the secrets of using the symbol tool in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this YouTube video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. You can also visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom and a whole lot more.